thank you for coming. I just want to thank you on the behalf of the Gardner family. You know, funerals tend to be a sad thing in our heart because we know we've lost someone. But it was Dan's wish and it's our wish to accommodate his wish and that is to have a celebration of his life. And what better honor can we pay to someone than to celebrate his life? So we're going to do that today. This evening's service is dedicated to Dan, the worship service. And so if you're around 6 o'clock and you want to come and join us for an hour of worship, worship to God as Dan we want it worshiped, that's what we'll be doing. I'll just ask you to stand and I'm going to invite the family to come in and join us. Helen, would you lead us in? And your sons? Please be seated. Wow. I'm just going to introduce myself. I'm Bob Welgrove. I'm the associate minister at this church. And Pastor Sergey gives his regrets. He's had a, a major setback and distress in his left shoulder. He can't drive. He's on medication. And I just said, stay home. God will take care of everything. And he is. He's amazing. So I just want to open with a couple of scriptures the Lord has laid in my heart because I've been here. I've been in this situation. Prayed for years for a niece. And I came to some conclusions that, you know, we have a time in life, and God has set that time, but we don't know that time. And so in, in Psalm 31 15, it says, My times are in your hands. And Dan's time was on earth, was very productive. It's obvious by the people who were here. And he was, he was always on the move. So, you know what? What he loved to do on earth, he's doing on heaven. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. He's probably finished that boat, has he? Yeah. He's probably sailing on the silver sea with my father. He might even be fishing up there. I don't know. He loved to fish too. The other, the other thing that... that I struggled with and, and I want you to realize is that God does not take anyone. You can't blame God because someone passes away. But the scripture is very clear that God receives them into his glorious presence. And we need to hang on to that. We know where he is. We know where we're going to see him again. If you don't know for sure, hopefully before this funeral is over, you'll understand there is a way to heaven. And Dan took it. And he wants it for you too. So we're going to open this morning with Amazing Grace. So if you would stand, um, Angela is going to lead us in voice, and Ruth is going to play the piano for us. Hallelujah. If you don't know the words, they're in the bulletin.
I was telling uh, Helen that Dan was going to speak to us today, and he will, to Reverend Forrest. You know, even, even in passing, we have a great legacy to pass on. Although there's a passing, today, be open to receive what Dan wants to pass on to you. Yeah. Just be seated, please. I'm going to ask um, Bev McLean. She's going to come and share some things. And, yeah, just listen to what God is speaking into your hearts, please. Bev. This is a tribute to Dan. It's very hard to define a dearly loved man. And so I find it difficult to tell about our Dan. He was the first wee little boy to carry on the name. A rebel in those younger years. We loved him just the same. Sometimes very late at night, everyone in their rooms, Dan had not come home yet. Judy would pray he'd come home soon. Then, hey Jude, Dan would call and teeter off to bed. He'd had one too many, too many, and it went right to his head. Dan was Joni's best friend in their teeny bopper years. They shared dancing, dates, and laughter, and moments of sadness and tears. And me, I'm his little sister. To me, he was so brave and strong. I wanted his look of approval. It was as though he could do no wrong. And Ron, he was the brother, the only one Dan had. He wanted to be just like him, oh so very bad. And then our Dan, he married his lovely little wife. She tried to keep him right on track through his tumultuous life. Micah came, then Daniel, their precious baby boys. Now Dan could be the daddy that he wanted as a boy. But life just got too busy. God said, it's time to go. It's time your body rested now, but oh, we miss you so. We are his loving family, and we're so sad he's gone, but we know that he's in heaven. So Dan, say hi to mom. Hallelujah, thank you very much. It's hard to say goodbye, but we always have the hope of saying hello in the future. And yeah, Dan's there waiting. Dan's there in his mansion. God has prepared a mansion for each and every one of us who want to stand and believe. And so I encourage you, you know, think about what Dan liked on earth. That's what he's got in heaven. That's what he's got in heaven. I know, my father's there. He loved to fish. He's fishing in heaven. It's amazing what God has in store for us. Doc Harris is going to come and share if he'd prepare himself. Thank you. You know, if it hadn't been for my near constant habit of backing my car into things, I might never have met Dan Gardner. <laughs> As it was, I'd backed my car into something that had reduced the bumper to something less than factory spec. And for reasons now lost in the fog of time, I took the car to Marine Collision where I met their body man, Dan Gardner. We hit it off right away, realizing that I was in show business, okay, radio, kind of lower rung of show business, but show business nonetheless, Dan mentioned that his son Micah was an actor and was looking for an agent. I was doing some movie work at the time and was represented by an agent who basically dealt with child, and in my case, childish actors. I put Micah and Dan together with her. She took Micah on, and the rest, as they say, is phys ed. <laughs> Micah got work. Dan got to repair my back bumper several dozen times. Let me say this, once you did Dan a favor, he was your friend for life. He became part of the family. I got to know Helen, Daniel, and Micah, shared dinners at their home, 
helped build their first website, and eventually became a fixture on Dan's radio show. Dan was a stand-up guy. He was always glad to see you. And you know, thinking back on it, I never heard him say one bad thing about anyone. Once in a while, you meet someone you know would be there for you no matter what happened. And if things got really bad, you could turn to. Dan was that kind of guy. When he said he would do something, he did it. The perfectionism he applied to his work, he applied to his life, his family, and his friendships. Second best or that will do were not part of his makeup. And even if it all looked like it wasn't going to work out, he had an inner strength that made him push through any obstacles in his path with an optimism that was admirable. Just thinking of running a body shop all day and then putting in the tremendous amount of time and research you need to produce a radio program makes me want to go take a nap. But not our Dan. There was always a passion for anything he was doing. He always had a bit more in him to get the job done and done well. He was generous, too. About once a month, he would take the whole cast and crew of his radio show out for a bite and a beer after it was done. And anyone who attended those huge dinners he had at the Yokohama restaurant knows what a deep pocket he had when it came to his friends. He would invite them into his home, take them on boat cruises, and honor them in any number of ways. Point is, I guess, he didn't have to do that. People loved Dan for who he was. That was more than enough. And Dan loved his family most of all. I think we all know there wasn't a thing he wouldn't do for them. They were on his mind every minute of every hour of every day. Without them, I don't know if he would have worked so hard or striven with such determination. Dan Gardner was truly one of a kind and he brightened all our lives. If there's any reason to be sad today, it would be that he didn't have enough time to carry out all the plans and dreams he had for the future. But he will be with us, and he has given us something we can take from him forever, and that is the happiness he gave us. Goodbye, Dan. We love you, and we miss you. Give a radio man the phone, the <laughs> microphone, and you never get it back. Right? Wow. Thank you, Doc. Um, when they asked me if I knew who you were, I didn't. The name didn't trigger. But when you started speaking, I knew exactly who you were. <laughs> oh, wow. God is amazing. You know, I just want to honor our guest speaker this morning. Um, Reverend Forrest Gibbs paid us the honor of coming to our church a few years back and Deeply blessed us. We love this man. And God spoke to him that he should come here and he has the word. And when God tells you you have the word, you listen. So I encourage you, just read him now. He's going to bring the word. Listen to what he has to say. He's a powerful man. Blessings Thanks. come. I'm wired for power. I think I'll stand over here in front of the family. I've known this family for. Uh, Helen and I talked about it yesterday, I think for 20 years. That makes me old. She's not old, but it makes me feel old. And, and so I've learned a lot from Dan and, and the family. That, um, uh, so this morning I got up early and, and I wrote what I think about, uh, think about Dan and what I will forever remember about him. We all leave our marks in life. And I've wondered why I was, I'm drawn to certain people. That's kind of what I wrote out this morning. Why certain ones, uh, it's like a magnet that draws me into their circle and I draw them into my circle. Because Dan in my personality is, was kind of like, he lived on the cutting edge of faith. He's a wild man. That's, that's a good statement now. And, and uh, he run the fast lane. So I begin to think this morning and reminisce uh, of, of what I admired about him and admired about him most. And I take notice of certain people. I love people. I love to be among people. I've been coming to Canada for 23 years. I've got Canada on my heart. I've got a burden for Canada like some have for Africa and India. And, and I love the people in Canada. And I haven't met an enemy yet. Now, they may be an enemy to me. I don't know. But I haven't, as far as I know. 
uh, met any of this, and I thank all of you for being here. Uh, it shows your respect for this wonderful family. And, and I've, they've always had a room for me. I, uh, Daniel came in and took my room away. I had his room for a while. And then I moved into Micah's room, and so I lived all over that house. And, and I enjoy it at least a couple of days every time I come in. I've been doing it for many, many years, and, and I've never met anyone. I'm not here to, supposed to, I'm supposed to not be here to pay tribute to Helen. We call her the better half, the female. But uh, uh, Helen, every time I came, she always kept a fruit bowl on the table and then the desk wherever I was sleeping at. And me and the cat slept together. The cat loved me and I loved the cat. Uh, it's the only cat I was ever close to, it was Bobtail. It was one of those big Bobtail cats. And so the dog don't talk much. But I found out about the personality of the dog last night. She was missing chocolates. And she put out chocolates for the family and guests coming in. And the chocolates were all going missing. Well, the dogs found out where the chocolates were. So her big dog was eating all the chocolates in the house. And so I love the dog and I love the cat who passed away after Dan. Just before uh, Dan passed away, uh, the beautiful cat of the house. And so uh, Dan lived the fast lane of life. And we are in a fast lane society today. It's hard for us to keep up with the technology. I've got me a brand new computer about a month ago. I needed one of lightning strikes. We have, uh, uh, we have lightning strikes in Oklahoma. Uh, moved from Dallas to Oklahoma about eight years ago, and it burned up every one of my computers. Uh, those electric storms coming through, so I got me another uh, computer uh, about a month ago. Well, and so my Verizon is in Dallas, three hours away, and my computer wouldn't work. Well, I found out technology, you've got to have a MiFi. I never heard of a MiFi. I knew about a Wi-Fi, but this is an M-I-F-I. They said my old technology wouldn't run the new computer. So I had to race to Dallas to get me a MiFi and, and uh, learn to turn that thing on. Now, it's hard on old men. This, you young people today, you've got it made. You've got the brain for these times. I couldn't keep up with Dan. He could run all the way to the shop. And I'd get tired just thinking about it. And, and so anyway, I suppose that uh, I'm drawn to the fast lane of life. I live on the fast lane. I love yesterday flying from uh, DFW or Dallas, American Airlines at 38. I love height to 38,000 feet, uh, run into Canada and shoot all my guns and get back on America and fly out as quick as I can in case somebody's chasing me. And, and so flew in at 38,000 feet and was glad to get here. There's a different climate in Canada. I'm supposed to be paying tribute to uh, Dan, but uh, let me pay tribute to you that are from Canada. I've lived in the USA for my 80 years, except for coming to Canada quite often. And uh, the spirit of Canada, of the US, cannot compare to Canada. Uh, I've never met so many uh, honorable people and friendly people as I meet in, in Canada. And that, maybe that's why I don't want to come. I've even thought about moving here. And if you loan me your house for about every other month, I may move here. And I don't know whether at my 80 years old, my wife says, quit telling your age. Maybe people are going to underguess you. I'm so glad to get to the next day. Uh, I thank God every morning that I see the sun come up. And uh, about a, a year ago, the, I got a doctor in Dallas that looks after me and a doctor in Oklahoma looks after me. And they both begin to examine me the one in Dallas sent me a letter and they, he wanted to do an extreme, uh, extreme checkup on me. Well, I read it outside that envelope and I don't even care about an, ex an examination, much less an extreme one. So I put it off six months and finally went to him and, and uh, he checked me for two months. I, he must have found something wrong with me. And the doctor in Oklahoma checked me for two months. And you, you know, you start looking for reason for pain when you get above 65. And, and so finally, two months later, they were in confusion and said, we can't find anything wrong with you. I think Canada's the health power to me. Y'all make me feel healthy and fill me with joy, and I thank you 
for being so open-hearted to us, unusual. I'm an American Indian. I blame my long talk and my words and you hard to understand and hard to understand on my Indian heritage. We're not up to date like the Canadians. I'm not a First Nation yet. We're just average old Indians from Oklahoma and Texas. And and so they call them natives back there, but I don't have it reached the native stage. I'm still Indian. I'm just an old Indian. And I guess we'll fade away, they say we do. But anyway, in number three, I even like to read from Scripture about the lifestyle of those that lived like Dan Gardner. Uh, the areas that I enjoy reading in the Bible more than any other is individuals like Jehu. It took three men to replace Elijah. And Jehu was one of them. And he approached the king one day and said, come join me, get on my chariot, and see my zeal for God. Dan Gardner was a zealot. What is a zealot? Fast track. And, and you better not tell him, uh, told him that your car was faster than his. He'd either buy one that would outmaneuver yours if he had to. But that was the zealot in him. One of my favorite verses in the book of Acts is it says, these that have turned the world upside down have come near us. World changers. And, and, and so uh, I, I know these two boys. I know them since as kids, uh, Michael and Daniel. Michael and Daniel. And uh, I believe, and, and I told Helen that yesterday when she picked me up at the airport, I believe that Dan would have given his lives for these two boys. Now, that don't belittle the little wife that he took care of. That, that uh, I call her the mother of uh, one of the, what, four. She, she's a motherly type, and she mothered me when I come by keeping fruit on the table and caring for me and, and, uh, and Micah. And so she had to mother Micah and, and Daniel and Dan. She had a full-time job mothering four people, and, and she did a good job at it. Now, you're not going to die or anything. I'm paying tribute to you too, uh, Helen. Uh, but I'm more or less just thanking you for, uh, oh, no man is greater than the female behind him. And my wife is so backward. If she'd have been forward, it'd no telling where we, we'd probably be a TV star today. Uh, I once was, and I didn't want to do it anymore in, in 1980. Uh, I had all the television equipment was on all Dallas and Fort Worth stations and all. And, and so December 19, uh, you see the, the charismatic move of the 70s and then the TV move uh, of the 80s, in 1989, in December, the Lord said to me, uh, if you stay on television, you're going to have to produce a better show. I said, what do you mean show? He said, did you know it's your show business? I said, no. He said, that's the show business of the church today. You know what I did in December 1989? I pulled all my equipment, put them in storage, and I even sold the building here a while back with all the stuff in it, Sony cameras, all the equipment, I've been invited to go on TBN, and I've asked the Lord, do you want me to get back on show business? He said, I told you no. And they want me to come on and teach on angels. Don't be praying for me. Get on TV. Talk to the Lord about it. Ask him why he don't want me on show business. It, it, I, a lot of my friends are on it. And, it but anyway, Dan, it's, he's on radio. We're my radio announcer. I love his voice. I'm going to anoint you to be a preacher when I leave here. I don't know where you're at with that. <laughs> uh, but... But he's got the voice for it. In fact, my friend who's on radio in Dallas, he's now, you see, I'm 80. He's, uh, I think he's 88 years old. And he's found a key on computer. He is sending messages to 15,000 preachers at churches over TV. A prophetic word, one page. And, and he's growing. And, I mean, that guy is turned on for God, and he's going on toward his 90s now. And... Uh, Sends me a copy of it. But he's got the voice like you've got. God gave you a voice. After service, let's talk about you being a preacher. In case, in case y'all don't me. But anyway, such people like Dan Gardner, I put down, and, and this really fits to me, his personality and his family. He was adventurous. People like that are easy bored. And then the heavens can't live with them unless they get them back up on high class position again. My wife and I are the most two different people. 
Now, if you and your wife or you and your husband are different, maybe God puts you together. Where there's a, if, when I'm down, she's up, when I'm, and it's vice versa. But she could go to church and listen to the devil preach and enjoy it. And pat her foot and do a little dance. She literally could. It don't matter who's the preacher and how dead he is and dry he is. She enjoys herself. She's just, just normal and average. If they don't have me hanging from the ceiling, I'll go sleep on them. And she'll nudge me and keep me awake during the service. But I believe that she'd have died of boredom if I hadn't been seeing her life. Because she don't like highlights. And, but you know what? I would have self-destructed if God hadn't put her in my life. She's my wisdom, and she keeps me balanced. I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about the trail raiser, Dan Gardner, the adventurer, the pioneer. The, the word says that it names them in the book of Hebrews, some individual similar to Dan, that said that through faith they subdued kingdoms. I went with you and Dan on that radio station, and he loved that thing. And do you know the last time I saw him, my last trip, uh, Dan said, uh, and told me what all he was doing. And I commended him. I said, God's going to honor you, Dan, for the thought processes. You're, he was organizing himself. He was caring for his family and these two boys. And, and we opened up at his table, and he told me what all his plans were. He has more writings than anybody you'll ever see in your life. I told him about a word the Lord had given me for him one morning, and, and he picked up some kind of a folder where he had written pages and pages uh, I said, God is giving out information and knowledge like Daniel said today like never in history. We are in a knowledge awakening. Well, Dan reached over and pulled out uh, uh, a big folder of writings that he did and he confirmed what I was saying to him that he was taking heavenly notes. I hope y'all are. Taking heavenly notes. God speaking to him. He had an ear to hear from the Lord and it was amazing. He could replace me in a minute if he had got out of the car repair business and the paint business and the other businesses that he was in. But through faith, they produced superior righteousness. They obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, rose valiantly in their war zones, put armies of aliens on the run. And that's Dan Gardner. And if there was another, Helen, if there was another Bible written today, the 21st century, I believe Dan Gardner's name would be in it as a uh, olive branch of what God desires in this generation. We need some powerhouses today, folks. In America, I, I forgot I'm in Canada. Y'all may not have problems like we've got in America. But I guess y'all read about them. In fact, two trips I've made up here, I've told the people, we've got to get back to the real God. Not the player God that a lot of preachers are presenting. We've got to find the real God in our problems of today. That's in America. Y'all probably in Canada don't have any uh, problems. In fact, uh, I was in uh, uh, over Point Roberts in a in a ballroom speaking in the service. I think I might have been in White Rock, and I, I'd never heard so many griping people as I met in Canada. That's the other side, fussing about taxes and fussing about all kinds of negatives in Canada. Well, at that particular trip I was up here, the the Vancouver Sun and all there was three newspapers that said they taken a survey. And the best country to live in was Canada, in the whole world. The best area to live in was in the Vancouver area. And they made three surveys and found out the, the best area to live in the world was in Canada, and I'm hearing all these fussy people. You know what I did that morning, a big group of people over at the uh, Pacific, Barbara's a Pacific Inn, is that the name of it? Pacific Inn in White Rock. And I showed those newspapers to those people, and I said, I want y'all to quit fussing. You're living in the best land that God has ever created, and enjoy yourself. Well, a lot of people accepted the Lord that Sunday morning, and I baptized in their swing pool. I don't know whether y'all know where that pink hotel is over there or not, but I baptized, uh, I ministered up to about 9.30 that evening, and the swing pool closed at 10. So about 54 people, we rushed up to that swing pool, and I baptized them all. And then the manager came over and jumped onto him. He said, you can't do that here. <laughs> oh, and I apologized all I could, but we're already done it. <laughs> so so uh, I love life. And Dan Gardner, I mean, he fed off the of wind. He fed off of life. And there wasn't, uh, even during his last days, he was that happy, cheerful one who arose of the morning. 
And you know what he'd tell me? I never did tell him that I could look in his eyes and read uh, his, his uh, pain level or his sickness level. I didn't want to depress him in any form or fashion. But I looked in his eyes and saw how sick he was. But you know what? He was still waving his flag. He was still a cheerful leader. He's still trying his best to go to work. I mean, right up to the, uh, the end of his days. And that's that hidden zone power in an individual uh, like uh, Dan Gardner. Uh, I think that Dan Gardner was a friend of God, like Abraham. Uh, I don't guess I've ever met even a preacher that God talked to as much as Dan Gardner. And, and, and you know what? He didn't try to be a preacher. He didn't try to preach to people. He just lived his life. And, and it was a life you could pattern after, a good cheer life. And another thing, when Elijah, this fast lane, I got to think, I begin to think about biblical characters who was in the fast lane. So Elijah prayed up a cloud and a rain to come back into a drought land. And the Bible says that Elijah outran the royal chariot of Ahab back to the city. The reason being the hand of the Lord was upon him. And that's kind of Dan Gardner, uh, whether he's on a bicycle or on foot, he ran ahead of the crowd. He was a leader in all categories of life. And in fact, something I heard, heard during the, this, I don't think it's this week, but my last trip, said the reason he was always broke, he gave everything away. So he was a giver. And, and that is life. That's what life is all about. God gives, it's a giving, uh, sowing and reaping uh, law that we follow. But Elijah outran the royal chariot. And, and uh, then uh, most of God's spiritual giants were known by their zeal. If you read, read the life of Moses, I'm glad to see some more that I know of. Peeped around, I'm glad to see you here this morning. I, I, I'm enjoying myself, y'all. This is supposed to be celebration. It's not easy to celebrate on times like this. But I guarantee you, if Dan came up here and stood beside me, he would be a cheerleader. Uh, no matter what we may think, and uh, he escaped a lot of long years of pain by being escorted out of here, but I think he's about like uh, Enoch. He just went too far. I don't know if, whether anybody even, Helen knows where he was at spiritually, but I kind of took his spiritual temperature, and I'm telling you what, I don't believe I've ever met a man that God talked to any more than to Dan Gardner. And, and he kept notes. That's what was so commendable. He didn't, he's a good steward. He didn't waste thought process, but whatever God showed him, he wrote it down on paper. In fact, if you run across that, he wrote some golden nuggets down. Helen, you ought to retain that, but if you don't, that's my inheritance. I know you've got a room full of books over there. I've, I'm still thinking about what to do with all those books, but, but uh, uh, God's spiritual giants were fast, lame people. And I believe God puts his children out in front of the whole world. Do you know we saints know more about what's going on in America than the politicians? Than the president? Isn't it nice to know more than the president knows? It's trial and error that he tries. But the saints of God knows we're red. And, and I pretty well know we're red. Uh, Dan Carter could accomplish in one day what it would normally take an ordinary man to accomplish in ten. Just put him out in front and tell him it can't be done, he'd do it. That's the pioneers of the faith. They never give uh, my wife, now we've been married 62 years. That's 62 miracles. I'm the best counselor. If you need a family or marital counseling, relationship counseling, I guarantee you I can help you. Only God kept that thing together 62 years, but that's a 62-year miracle living in these days today. But, but I, I've learned how to keep my mouth shut <laughs> and when to. So... Dan was quiet in that house too. Uh, Helen's the one that talked most of the time in the house, but Dan knew when to keep, he was smart. I believe, I'll close with this, I believe that the DNA Daniel Gardner zeal is a part of the bloodline of these two boys and his wife here. He didn't leave a dent in life. He left a mark. And I was complimented this week to meet the whole family of this Dan Gardner. And I see in them some of the traits of Dan Gardner. I see the softness and tenderness that sometimes hidden. And I see the tough front. Dan could cover up better than anybody I ever knew. 
And, and I'd tell him often. He heard it, and Helen would tell him every time I told her, Dan's hiding from me. And he didn't have anything to hide. He just, he wanted to appear when he wanted to appear. He's on his time and his position. So uh, uh, Dan is uh, the bloodline that he left, the DNA he left, the power he left, the zeal he left, the love he left. It's hard to understand the love of a zealot because they're on a move. They're thinking up another uh, challenge, another charge to go into. My brain, I dream more, I work harder in my night sleep than I do of a day. My wife wants me to go to church with her on Sunday morning, and I tell her, I've been in church all night. I've been preaching. I preached five sermons last night. And she don't understand that, but I do more in my sleep, in, in labor or work, in ministry. I pray for, it's a new thing happening to me the last 12 months. I pray for preachers and churches and people I've never met in my dreams. The Lord said it's the cleanest prayer you could ever utter. Because they don't know you, you don't get credit, and your name won't go up in highlights. And you're praying for some. Uh, and I asked him one night about a dream I had for a church and a pastor. And I was praying, but I thought I was going to go speak to that pastor. And we met for coffee. And he said, By the way, I think uh, you're not going to preach for us tonight. I said, That's okay. I'll pray for you. So I prayed for him. When I woke up, I asked the Lord, What is going on there? He said, a pastor in church needed prayer and you don't know who it is or where it was and I had you pray for them, now they'll have a move of my presence because I go through humanity to connect with my heart to change things on earth and so you just change the church. You don't even know where it's at. You don't get, you don't observe or take any credit for it. It's, it's kind of a new thing. We're in a new operation. Dan Gardner was up to date. He was a current man. It's like Enoch. I'll say that again. He went too far with God. I don't know which side you saw him on, but I saw him on both sides. I saw him on the man on God's side. He walked too far with God, and God just took him. That's the best way to go out of here. I mean, that's a shortcut to heaven. He don't have to worry about all the stuff we've got to worry about. He's better off than we are today, in a way. His family is not, I know that. But uh, uh, the, Dan Gardner fits the description. And, and the 20 years that I've known him, he was a world changer. I never traveled the mountains. I never met Corey Ten Boom. Now that's a feather in your cap, as we natives would say. Uh, that's a mark in your life would remain there forever. I've never met an individual in my 80 years that ever met Corey Ten Boom personally. And, and she went down in the history books of the church as a great witness for God. But she, uh, she took Dan under her, uh, her wings, so to speak, her spiritual wings, and kind of trained him in a lot of principles. Now, God must have really loved that boy, Dan Gardner, to invest in him all of the background, even today, and kept him alive in his wild dreams and Helen putting up with him and he, he and I. And, and so I'm a wild one too, but she knows how to handle wild bronx and wild bucking horses and that's kind of how I classify the Dan Gardeners. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak to you today and I'm highly complimented that I can come and be a cheerleader for Dan Gardner. Brother Paul. God bless. Thank you. <coughs> wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you for us. I've just been sitting here when I was listening to Forrest talk and you know he's obviously had a lot more contact with Dan than I did as many of you probably did. Dan used to come here some prayer evenings for prayer. A humble, quiet, gentle, easygoing man. Loved to pray, loved to be prayed for. Came here the last few weeks of his life. We had the blessing of praying for him and, and just letting him feel the presence of God. In retrospect, I look back and I say, God, you were preparing him to come home. You were preparing him to come home because he's in that presence from now and forevermore, eternity, until the rest of us join him. And sometimes God in his mercy and his grace prepares us for something that's coming. We don't always understand it until it happens. 
And I mean, I, no one was shocked any more than I was when we got a phone call that he had passed away. Because when he was here, he was full of life. And that's God. He brings life and prepares us for eternal life. And that would be Dan. And Dan would be saying, you know, i got to touch a life. Now, I want you to know that there is life after death. And it's the life that God wants you to have. And it's your guys' responsibility to continue and to walk and honor and build up and direct what your husband and father started. It's your gift. He gave it to you. It's a gift of life. When my, when my uncle died, his grandson was at the home when they came to take him away. And his neighbor in great wisdom said to this little boy, he said, that's only the package in which God gave you a gift. The gift is still in your heart. It's always stuck with me. You know, we only, we only are on earth, we sojourn on earth for a period. But we leave such an amazing gift that influence the people who are here now. You were influenced by Dan. You, you were touched by Dan's life, by what he spoke into you, what he shared with you. You still have that. Yes, the package has gone to heaven. But the gift he gave you is eternal. And just savor it and enjoy it. And remember it. And remember to pass it on. That's our responsibility. Pass it on. We're going to do a congregational singing uh, once again. And so if Ruth and uh, Angela would come, thank you for doing that. In Christ alone. Till he returns.
Thank you. Thank you, Angela and Ruth. That was amazing. You know, even, <clears throat> even in singing, Dan is still speaking. You, you may sit, please. You know, in Christ I stand. I stand alone. Because the only way we can stand in a time like this is in Christ. Knowing that our foundation is firm. Our feet are firmly planted. And God has a purpose for each and every one of us. We were created in His likeness. The Bible is very clear on that. Each and every one of us is created in His likeness. And so that we can magnify and glorify God and show God to the world. And that's what Dan did. And I, I learned more about Dan in the last half hour than I ever knew in all the years I've seen him. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't, as like I said, I didn't have a relationship with Dan. We live in two different areas completely and, uh, yeah. But when he came, I sensed there was a brother, someone I could love and someone who loved me. And, and he loved you guys deeply and you loved him, obviously, because you've given up your afternoon to come here and pay tribute to him. And, I just asked Helen if, if there was an opening for some people to share something because I've just sensed in my spirit that there probably is two or three people that would like to come up and just give a tribute to Dan. So if you have something in your heart, you just need to come and share with us. Please come now. speakers. <laughs> Tough, isn't it? Sorry to spring. Oh, here comes an honest woman. Amen. I don't think I'm honest. Usually if he starts sharing, someone else will come up. Uh, I've known Dan and Helen for a long time. I knew them when I, before I met my husband, which I won't say how long ago. It'll date me, but uh, I used to be involved with a or Christian or, organization called Youth of the Mission, and I went to a wedding of a mutual friends, and Dan and Helen were at the wedding. And they'd only been married maybe a couple of years before me. And uh, I just really connected with them at the wedding. And I remember Rudy liking them right away. And I felt like they were out of the box a bit. I mean, Dan, Dan Helen's always been amazing. No, he wasn't, but very out of the box. And I went, but I like him. And they used to be involved, I don't know if you realize, uh, at an outreach in Pigeons Park. Do any of you know Pigeons Park in Vancouver? Kind of an interesting place, all right? Interesting, uh, breaks. a lot of people there that are, um, you know, down and out. And they had an outreach out of a storefront type thing. And I went down there as a young girl, took the bus down, met Dan, and Helen wasn't there. And it was just him and me. And he took me for a walk down around that area, east side, Vancouver East Side. And I was just kind of like, wow. I had no idea. But he was really at, relaxed and had no problem connecting all these people and some of them knew him and we came up to the spell that was intoxicated and I won't say what state he was in, he was in a good shape and it wasn't that so much that but he really I can't describe what was going on at, the, at that moment and I just about I think I wanted to run away at that point because things were going on that I don't want to describe so and Dan was just carried on and loved this man and I, I just never forgot that his heart for, for people was huge. He had a huge heart. And you look on the, I'm learning that if you look on the outside, you might judge, you know what, not to judge others because we don't know what giants they are. And I saw in Dan that, that time such an amazing man of God. And I've never differed from that. I've always seen him as a man of God. The last time we saw Dan, we went to see him at the hospital. And all I could do is say, Dan, you're an amazing man of God. I want you to know, you can hear me because he is, and he's enjoying, he's with the cloud of witnesses right now, going, yes, come on, guys, keep going, guys, come on, Daniel, come on, Micah, you, he, you know, you're champions, he loved you guys, he spoke all the time about you guys, and Helen, Helen, who loves, he's always been so beautiful, and uh, just a privilege to know you guys, and I, I hope we can carry on our, our long friendship, because I just really love you guys, all of you, I'm just so proud to know Dan. He's, he's Dan the man. He's always be, that, always be that to me. It's my wife, Susan. <laughs> I met Dan in about 1980, I think just after we got married. And uh, I thought, wow, this guy's incredible. He was leading YWAM at that time. And he was loving people, pastoring people, caring for people, and uh, self-sacrificing. And if you look at his life, I've known him all these years, 
We've seen each other every year, different times. He never changed. He just did it in a different place other than YWAM or in a church, but he did it every day. And I saw him do it every day. I saw him give continuously, sacrificially, continually, loving people, loving on people, making life work for them. He was amazing at doing that. And he fixing our cars <laughs> and more and that. So I just want to honor him, bless him. He was one heck of a guy. And uh, he's not forgotten by any means. And it's not going to be that long until I see him again and the rest of us until we see him again. And that's the amazing, great thing about heaven. And I think he's going to look a little bit younger. <laughs> and uh, he'll be that younger version, and I think I will be too. But we'll recognize each other, recognize each other I'm sure. Thank you. How about I come to you, brother? Then you don't have to walk quite so far. Great. Thank you. I'm going to sit up here, if that's okay with you. I have known Dan for longer than most of you folks. I remember when he came to Port Alberni and he was a little guy about this high. And I've known the family and it's so nice to be here again today. Dan was always, as has been pointed out many times, he was always sort of living on the edge. And I remember he came to me one day and he said, I'm going to leave home. I said, I don't think that's a very good idea. I said, how on earth are you going to support yourself? I'll get a job. Talked him out of that. And he, as young fellows would do, got into a lot of things that he should not have been into. And then he went to Europe. And I thought, oh dear, what a place to go, knowing the problems that he had at the moment. But then one day, I got a letter. It was from Gibraltar, and it was from Dan. And I sat down and I opened it. And Dan had met a group of YWAMers, and he'd gotten saved. I sat in my chair and I cried and I cried and I cried and I was so thankful that this had happened. I was so thankful to get that letter. Dan eventually went to school with YWAM and then went to work with Corey Ten Boom and eventually he found his way back to Canada, met him out at the YWAM farm out at De Roche, always been interested in his, what, his doings and what he was up to and so on and so forth. And I agree with our brother, he was always, always so positive about the things of God. And while Dan has slipped away to heaven, going to see him again. And that will be a wonderful reunion. Praise God. Wow. Someone else want to have the final word? Well, uh, my name is John. I'm uh, don't I, I I don't even know this this man Dan. I was uh, I came to Vancouver. I live in Summerland. I came to Vancouver to support a sister of mine who 
who uh, came for this celebration. Um, I have the Spirit of God. There is a, a deep, a, a just, a, a just a deep desire in my heart to share something on behalf of this man. Um, I believe this, I know this is from the Spirit. He is really encouraging everyone here to really just acknowledge um, this, whole, this whole gift of being chosen. Being chosen, being adopted, being accepted. Um, from what I understand of Dan's life, it's truly uh, uh, the way it's printed out in the Word that God chooses the weak, the lowly, the foolish, the despised. He chooses us in that state, and we remain in that state, in this earthen vessel, but we rise up in the spirit. And, and I really believe God wanted to share and say that don't, don't deny when God, you know, speaks to our hearts. Um, it's like the song, Come As You Are. He's not looking at us and down upon us. And he, he, he truly loves us uh, as we are. And, uh, and I think Dad would really have that spoken, that... Um, it was Christ alone in him, you know, that gave him um, the honor that, that you're all experiencing and sharing. So uh, God bless you and um, I encourage you just to put your hope and trust in, in the Lord. Thank you. Good word. Good word. Yes. Come on. Hi everybody, my name is Micah and my wife Paula and I, we didn't know Dan for very long. Um, Paula met him through a networking um, opportunity a little over a year ago and I shortly after that and I gotta say the, the one thing that I will always remember about Dan is the amount of energy that he had and it wasn't just a drive, it was this, this I want to call it a glow, it was this positive energy that he would just spread on to anybody the, the open-heartedness, the friendliness, that, and the amount of wishes and dreams that he had. He was so, so creative, so he could picture things, and there are not many people nowadays anymore that can just make these, you know, castle of dreams and actually work towards them and not just talk them down. And I, I always thought when, when we met Dan afterwards, I was always like, wow, like, people nowadays aren't like that anymore. Like most people that are positive and open and friendly and giving, they're taken advantage of and they lose this gift. They, they stop giving because they're getting hurt. And I always thought, like, he just keeps going. Wow. And that is the one thing that Paul and I will always remember is how he treated us. That even though we only knew him for about a year, he always treated us like family. He was, we were so close to him with barely any time in between it. And for that, I want to say thank you. It was amazing to know him. Wow, I was sitting there and thinking, Dan, have you got something to say? And they were talking about technology. And Dan just told me, you know what, guys? There's technology up here you haven't even dreamed of yet. We don't drive on roads, we fly over them. Our cars fly. And he's got a massive, massive engine in his. He can fly all over heaven in a matter of seconds. And it's like, we have no idea what's in store for us until we get there. But those of us that are learning to listen to what God has to say, we get an insight in a little bit. The Bible says we sleep in a mirror dimly of what it's like. But I know everything in heaven that's in your heart's desire that you like to do here, that's available in heaven. It's waiting for you. Technology, it'll blow your mind. It'll keep you busy forever. He's going to run to keep up with what God creates. You know, man's only discovering, man's only finding out what's around us. God's known for centuries. He created it. And there's so much more we haven't found yet. So, Father, I just want to honor Dan. I want to honor the Gardner family. I want to say thank you. Thank you for the privilege of hosting this 
service of celebration of Dan's life and, and all that he was and all that he will continue to be and all that he will be through his family for generations to come because he lived. Because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Because he lived today and shared and installed and taught, we can live for generations down the road with that spark of life, with that joyful smile that was always there, that gentle giving heart. I just thank you, Father, that your word says clearly, you received Dan into your presence and you bestowed upon him the gift of eternal life. And you presented him with the keys to a mansion. He's <laughs> probably got the biggest auto body shop in history in the backyard, fixing modern flying cars. But that's the kind of God he served. And that's the kind of God he trusted in. And that's the kind of God he displayed and loved. And I thank you for that. I say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. Enter into your rest. Dan would say, enter into your rest. Yes, you can be in a hurry. Yes, you can move with intensity. But be ready for the rest. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wow. So the back doors lead down to downstairs. There's washrooms downstairs there. There'll be food on the tables. Come, join the family, greet them. Um, yeah, what else can we say? God is good. Service tonight, yes. We, uh, as a church leadership, we felt it was only appropriate that we dedicate this evening's worship service uh, to Dan's memory. And actually, Angela's going to be leading that service. So it'll be awesome. She's an amazing worship leader. So if you're around, we, we start at 6, go to about 8 o'clock with a total service. But an hour of worship. Uh, in dedication to, Anne, to Dan's life and his memory. God bless. Thank you for coming. Thank you from the, the whole family and from this family at New Life Christian Center. Thank you for coming and, and worshiping with us and about Dan's life. God bless. Sissy, and I'm a recent convert of, of Dan's, um, and we met uh, through the work that Dan did on my truck and horse trailer, and he did, he took them apart from bottom up and made the most beautiful work of art on the trailer that I thought I could never use again because it's all moldy, and they were so helpful, he and Helen, with uh, bringing the trailer back and forth and, and accompanying me, and I, I met Dan in just in the last two years, so... Uh, I will also remember him when I'm driving the truck with a horse trailer, but I'll remember him even if I don't do that. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Mary Watson, and I first met Helen Gardner in 1982. So it's been an amazing relationship with Helen, but of course over that time I got to meet Dan, and Dan fixed up a couple of our cars and, and uh, cleaned out the interior such that I could hardly believe it was an old car. It looked like a new car. Uh, we followed through uh, the lives of Micah and Daniel, and uh, it's been a wonderful relationship. And actually what's been so amazing is to learn learn all that we have learned today and we have been to the Ten Boom house and at some point before long I'll have a chance Helen to talk to you about that so Sandy and I uh, pass on our uh, our thoughts to you people and it's it's been a wonderful day of sharing thank you hi Helen I am your brother-in-law and uh, always be your brother-in-law and you are my sister now and I hope that we keep a close connection because uh, you're very special to us and we love you very much. And to the boys as well, Micah and Daniel, your uncle loves you very much 
and uh, hope maybe while we're in Ontario, you'll come and visit us. Or back at the old house on, uh, in Abbotsford, you'll come and visit us. And bring Trixie. And bring your mother. We love you all. Bye-bye. I'm standing here on location at, um, at a memorial service, a celebration of life for, for Dan Gardner, our friend, and uh, uh, Helen, we support Helen. We have breakfast, uh, Debbie and I have breakfast with her every Friday morning. We have wonderful memories of, of, of Dan. I know about a week before he passed, I got a call from Helen. She said, you know, want to go see Dan in the hospital, and I did. And uh, at the end of the, the, my visit with him, I, uh, I prayed, held his hand, and at the end of the prayer, he, uh, he took my hand and put it to his lips and kissed the back of my hand and looked up and said, I love you. And uh, that's what Dan was. He was a man that didn't hold back um, his feelings. And uh, that's just a wonderful memory that I, that I share. So, yeah, we're all going to miss him. Yeah. Very much. Thanks. Okay. Hi, Helen, Micah, and Daniel. We got we had a chance to get to know you through your husband Dan. We've met over just over a year ago, and I must say that you've always treated us like family, with respect and kindness. And we just love being around all of you, especially Helen and Dan. They're just so welcoming and positive. And like I always said, Helen was just like the glue that kept that place going. And like a yin and a yang, it's going to be hard to go on, but you know that your friends will always be here to help you through this through this difficult time. And if you need anything, we're definitely here to help you. Thank you. Hi, this is Corey Bretz. You know, Dan, the first time I met you, you gave me the biggest hug a stranger had ever given me. And I thought, who the hell is this guy? But your energy, your excitement, your passion, your joy, uh, and your uh, bull in the china shop uh, manner is infectious. And thank you for giving me permission to go out and wreak havoc in the world with love, too. So thanks a lot. And to your family, to Helen and the boys, uh, you know, uh, um, Keep on doing what you're doing. It's going to feel okay in a while, but it feels crazy right now. But you know what? Dan uh, has left you his energy, so use it, use it, use it. Love you all. Bye. Dan, Helen, family, you know, even though I've only gotten to know you in the last few years, you've had such an impact on, on me. Uh, a lesson that I learned from you is you live full on, you don't, hit, you don't hold anything back, everything just flows out of you. Uh, there's no filter, it's just full on, whether it's love, whether it's debate, whether it's energy, um, you always just let it fly, let it flow, and I will always dig that with you, uh, about you, and will always keep that with, uh, with me. Thank you so much for that, it's a gift that will keep on giving. All the best to you, and keep on rolling. I just wanted to say, Helen, that uh, the passing of Dan has really left a big void in our hearts. Dan was an amazing guy, I know that. Um, I had many good times with Dan in the younger days. And of course, you guys all know that. And looking forward to seeing uh, young Dan and Micah and talking about old times. But, stop by and say uh, hi to Elmer on our way home. Oh, it'll be a little bit too late tonight, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll stop in and see how he's doing. Hi, Michael. Micah, Daniel, and Helen. This is Alita and Bruce Russell. Just wanted to, to say, uh, give our condolences and how much we miss Dan and appreciate Dan. Uh, Helen, if you ever need anything, even a hug, phone me. We'll be right there. Thanks very much for inviting us and take care. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, hi, everybody. It's what, a, what a wonderful day this is celebrating Dan, Dan Gardner's life. He was just an awesome guy. We're so thankful to have met Dan and Helen way back in 1912, the late 80s perhaps, and, um, and through Helen's wonderful work with, with Julie fashions and Mary Kay Cosmetics. Uh, Helen and Dan became very good friends of ours and I always admired Dan for a guy that he was. He was daring to be different and I think most people are so afraid to be different but Dan had that courage and I think because of Dan he probably gave us more courage than we could ever imagine because if he could do it, we could do it too. And uh, 
very wonderful friends of ours, and they actually came and spent um, uh, a, a week with us in Mexico. We went to Puerto Vallarta and had a wonderful time with my husband, Ron. And it's just been a joy in our life, and I hope that that will continue on. And love to love their boys, and look forward to seeing, seeing them continue to grow up and emulate their dad, because he truly was a hero, and I know a hero to them and a hero to us. And I love to say what a man Dan was. He was special. And here's my husband, Ron, to say a few words, too. Yeah, Dan, you left us far too soon. Uh, we enjoyed your zest for life and your spirit. We had some great times together. I, uh, Dan was trying to teach me to do some karate, and uh, I only lasted a couple lessons. But uh, Dan was an interesting friend. He had uh, great interests and uh, very, very high energy. And as I say, he left us far too soon. Uh, sorry to see you go, Dan. Hi, Danny. We're here all, all together once again just for you. We'll see you in heaven. Love you lots. Don't forget to say hi to Mom. Yeah, say hi to Mom. Love you, Danny. Hey, Granny, how are you? Love you, Uncle Dan. Yeah, I will. You'll be watching in my... Say hi to Mom, Dan. Love you.